Kathy Wood just made some wild predictions about where investors should focus. Her vision for AI and robotics is way bigger than anyone realizes. This is huge. Check it out. If I'm a believer in AI, what's the number one stock that I should own to benefit from the oncoming AI wave? Well, I think everyone knows about NVIDIA. We always try and answer that question with stocks. People, either they don't know or they're not quite thinking about them in the right way. Uh, so Yeah, misunderstood. Maybe, maybe not misunderstood. unknown, but misunderstood or mispriced if you... So, if you... yes, as we were selling in NVIDIA and, and we got all kinds of flack, no, nobody bothered to notice that we put it in the portfolio in 2014 because of autonomous <laughs> driving at, I think, 20 cents on the current stock uh, uh, stocks basis at 20 cents per share. Um, and we held it for years and no one would listen to us. No one. I talked about robotics, talked about autonomous driving, talked about, uh, nope, it was a PC gaming chip company and that's all it was. And then it explodes with chat GPT and, you know, we, we start selling it and, and, and we sold it too soon in the, uh, in the flagship, I mean, meaning we exited it. We're back in it now when it dropped during tariff turmoil. But right. what did we put the money? In portfolio management, you have to not look at what, just what was sold, but what did you do with the proceeds? How about Palantir, which I think from that point has done better than NVIDIA. I, I, I don't know. It was, that was the case at one point. How about Coinbase when the SEC was suing it? That's one of the... That, that's what we use some of the NVIDIA for. It has done pretty darn well, um, I think almost as well as NVIDIA. So you have to do it. So today, of course, NVIDIA, st I mean, we, we, it, it still has a, a very important role. Palantir still has a very important role. It is the premier uh, platform as a service company. We think embodied AI is underappreciated. What is that? Embodied AI is physical AI, physical and digital worlds meeting. You know what I'm going to say next. Tesla is the largest AI project on earth, and it's not just robo-taxis anymore. It is humanoid robots. It is humanoid robots, and according to our research, while the robo-taxi opportunity globally for everyone, including China, is an eight to $10 trillion revenue opportunity in the next five to 10 years from maybe a billion now, so think about that, a billion, to eight to 10 trillion, the whole ecosystem, with the platform companies like Tesla getting half of that. So that's four to five trillion. That's a big market. Uh, according to our uh, estimates, uh, the humanoid robot market will be a $26 trillion market in the next, I'll say, seven to 15 years. I wanted to ask you about this because you, you put out this great deck or ARC put out a great deck. Um, and I love this slide. So uh, if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. If you're on audio, uh, sorry, you know, go, go to YouTube and, and or Spotify and check this out. So <laughs> on this slide, I'll just describe it. So it's basically the cost per mile. Like how much does it cost to travel, to transport a human being one mile? And you started like in the 1800s, like horse and carriage and, you know, adjusted for inflation and all that. It's not, it looks like it's $2.10 to travel a mile when you're, when you're on horse and carriage. Then, you know, you get the, the Ford, the, you know, Henry Ford era and you're at $1.10. And basically for like, I don't know, almost 100 years, it's been roughly the same number. It's been $1.10 exactly. to travel a mile. And yes. then your estimate is that with self-driving cars where you don't have a driver in there and you're on an electric self-driving car, that the cost per mile could drop to your estimate is a quarter. So, uh, you know, four times cheaper than what it currently costs and what it has cost for the last hundred years. Did I summarize your slide correctly? That is correct. That is correct. And, and, you know, when we first did this research, we too were astonished with that. Wait a minute. It costs the same inflation adjusted. Uh, that, that, and then that, one of the reasons for that is, because the, the automobile matured fairly quickly, right? And we're all about rights law. Rights law tries to understand, okay, you've got this new technology. You're starting from a low base. For every cumulative doubling in that base, so from one to two, two to four, four to eight, for every cumulative doubling, 
costs decline at a consistent percentage rate for each technology. Well, the mm. internal combustion engine is mature. And so it has no shot against EVs, even though I know, I know that's not the prevailing wisdom uh, in this political climate, or I'm just using economics and, and learning curves, so technology. Sorry, what do you mean by it has no shot? You mean like um, no shot in what sense? The cost comparison or just? No, because of the chart you just showed. You can't mm. get that cost down any lower. The, the, there, there are no more cumulative doublings. Everybody's got one. You know, uh, it's a bit of an exaggeration. In the emerging markets, they don't, but uh, they're not going to be paying up for, for uh, internal. They're going to be looking for the cheapest solutions to cars, and those are going to be electric. Cathy's bet on Tesla as the embodied AI leader shows why most people are completely missing the real AI opportunity hiding in plain sight. Tesla is building production facilities designed for massive manufacturing scale with ambitious humanoid robot targets. While the company already has years of experience deploying AI in the physical world through its vehicle fleet. Kathy calls Tesla the largest AI project on earth and the data proves she's not exaggerating. Here's what blows my mind about Kathy's Tesla thesis. Everyone sees Tesla as a car company, even a lot of the bulls think about it as electric vehicles and some self-driving features. But Kathy is looking at something completely different. She's focused on embodied AI, which is AI that exists in the physical world, not just on servers. Think about what Tesla's actually been doing for years. They've been teaching AI to navigate the real world through their robo-taxi development. Every Tesla on the road is collecting data about how to move through physical space, avoid obstacles, and interact with an unpredictable environment. That's the foundation for any robot that needs to operate in the real world. The robo-taxi piece is crucial because it proves Tesla can solve the hardest problems in embodied AI, understanding and reacting to chaos. Driving is incredibly complex. You've got pedestrians crossing randomly, other drivers doing unpredictable things, weather changing conditions, construction zones appearing overnight. If your AI can handle all that while moving at high speed, you've basically solved the core challenge of physical robotics. Most AI companies are working in controlled environments. They're processing text or generating images or analyzing data on servers. That's powerful, but it's limited. Tesla is the only major company that's been training AI to handle messy real world situations at scale for years. They've got billions of miles of data showing how to navigate physical reality. But the economics of robo-taxis matter just as much as the technology. Cathy's research shows transportation costs have been stuck at the same level for over a century. When you remove the human driver from the equation and switch to electric vehicles, the cost structure completely changes. No driver wages, lower fuel costs, fewer accidents. That combination could drop the price of getting from A to B by an order of magnitude. Cheaper transportation changes everything about how cities function, where people choose to live, and how goods move around. It's not just about replacing Uber drivers, it's about making mobility so cheap that entirely new business models become possible. But Cathy's boldest call isn't about robo-taxis. Cathy's massive prediction about the humanoid robot market sounds outrageous until you examine what's actually happening behind the scenes with production capabilities. The global humanoid robot market is projected to experience explosive growth over the coming years, while major manufacturers like Tesla are building production facilities designed for massive scale with plans to rump up manufacturing significantly. Cathy's forecast seems completely wild at first glance, but she's looking at a much longer timeline than most analysts. The market research shows incredibly high compounding growth rates, which is absolutely massive. But this is one of the key differences. Those industry estimates typically focus on the near term. Cathy is projecting much further out, and when you compound those growth rates over a longer period of time, the numbers start making sense. Think about what happened with smartphones. Nobody in the early days predicted they'd become everywhere. The market looked tiny because devices were expensive and had limited functionality. But as manufacturing scaled and costs came down, suddenly everyone on the planet needed one. Cathy seems the same exact trajectory playing out with humanoid robots. The real massive opportunity Cathy identifies is in jobs humans actively want to avoid. Developed nations are facing severe demographic challenges with aging populations and massive healthcare worker shortages looming. These positions need to get filled somehow. Scale that challenge across every developed economy, then add warehouse operations, manufacturing tasks, and eventually household responsibilities, and suddenly Cathy's big number doesn't seem unrealistic at all. 
It's not about robots replacing every human job overnight. It's about solving critical labor shortages in specific sectors where the economics clearly work first, then gradually expand into adjacent markets from that foundation. Each new use case builds momentum and drives costs down further, opening up more applications. That's how you get to a market size that sounds impossible today, but might be inevitable tomorrow. Ads are expensive and people don't trust them anymore, but they do trust YouTube. That's why three of our clients now make $100,000 a month for their business from growing a YouTube channel. If you run a business, book a call with me and I'll help you map this out.